Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all the praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, Rabbi Chakwadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of the great Muslim who were well. Peace, blessings, and salutations unto the four elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And uh, I came across this video because the title, you know, caught my eye. And I want to, uh, you know, just listen uh, to this individual, which, uh, you know, he's the uh, founder of that uh, site, End Time Headlines. You know, some uh, some of us brothers, you know, we actually go in, we go to this particular site, you know, just to get, uh, you know, current events, current news. And um, all related to biblical prophecy, you know, there's one thing about that site, you know, they always uh, keep posted you know different um events that are happening that can be um filtered through the scriptures and uh you know obviously he's a a christian you know he uh believes in the scriptures the word is uh, the most high and uh what one thing i will say is you know because on the surface you know he appears to be a needamite but uh you know we don't judge by the outward appearance you know this guy might very well be a jake you know he actually has that zeal you know when you listen to him you know that's what the scriptures say that about our people that they have a zeal of the most high but not according to knowledge all right but um you know this is an interesting topic and uh i want to uh you know basically do a response to it but uh, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna let him cook so you can uh listen and then I just want to basically commentate on it, you know, because this is um pretty much, you know, once um you know that that trumpet is blown, you know, the trumpet between the sixth and the seventh, that's when uh, Esau's world is going to end, and all the elect are going to get uh, delivered, you know, and that's going to be salvation. You know, a lot of people don't even understand what true salvation is, but by the time, you know, uh. The second death happens, you know, by the time the, the, the gathering, all right, the, the, the day of the uh, the day of doom, the day of threshing, that's when everybody's going to know who's saved and who isn't saved. All right. So anyway, um, I'm going to actually uh, play the video so you can listen. And then um, at uh, different points, I'm going to pause it. And I'm going to actually, uh, you know, go into uh, some of these scriptures. So uh, let's uh, listen. That's what we don't. Well, let me uh adjust the audio real quick. All right, let's go in. Don't tolerate. So we just want to let you know that. Up. So today, I want to be dealing with the unraveling the mystery of being caught up. Unraveling the mystery of being caught up. When it comes to being caught up, now, what am I talking about being caught up? This term is widely known in theological circles, and it's derived from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 15 through 18, where the Apostle Paul uses the phrase caught up in regards to the rapture or the gathering together. He uses this term caught up and we're going and that's what term he uses he does not use the term rapture christians use that term rapture all right now we don't call it that but i understand why they would actually call it rapture because when you just look into the root word for that particular term rapture all right what is the main uh, root word to that term and this is the most controversial term <laughs> that you can ever uh, speak on. You know, people getting all touchy filly and they feelings. But the, the term literally means to, 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 to seize or to carry off, to carry by force or, or take by force. That's literally what it means. And, and, and that's basically what the Lord is going to do. All right. Um, when, when the Lord returns with the angels. You know, all those who are of the elect, they're going to be uh, changed in a twinkling of an eye, which he's going to mention that. And then they're going to be caught up. They're going to get snatched up, taken up. 
all right? And, uh, you know, Apostle Paul described it as being caught up. Now, let's, uh, real quick, let's go there real fast. And we're going to start at verse, uh, 14, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 14. And it says, For if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh Shai will the Most High bring with them. You know, so those those of our brothers and even a few sisters, you know, if they're passed on and went to the spiritual realm, you know, from the moment this ministry, you know, uh, went forth, you know, during the, the, the work, you know, many brothers that in, uh, died during this uh, labor and uh, maybe a few sisters that believed that supported the ministry that might have passed on and, and, and went back to the spiritual realm. They all are going to be brought back when Yahweh Shai comes back. All right. So that should comfort you that, you know, if you lose a brother in this thing, you're going to see him again. All right. It says, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remaining unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend, or meaning he's going to come down from heaven with they shout. You know, with the shout of a, a trumpet, right, a great noise, and that's going to shake up the world. With the voice of the archangel, right, because Michael is going to be present. All right, it's going to be that war also that's happening in the heavens. All right, where, you know, Michael is going to stand up, you know, that that prince, he's going to stand up for us and he's going to defend us. It tells you that in Daniel, the 12th chapter, that we're going to need that divine intervention, you know, from um, the, the archangel. All right. Because, you know, it's going to be a time of great trouble as such as was not since the world was made. All right. And the Lord's going to do that on behalf of his chosen. It says that with the trump of the Most High and the dead in the Mashiach, Yahweh Shai shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we ever and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. All right, now we can look up that word caught up, which is uh, what was said. And uh, the word is uh, harpazo. Harpazo. And it means to seize, carry off by force, to seize on, claim for oneself eagerly to snatch out or away. Okay? So ultimately, that's what the Lord's going to do. He's going to carry us off all right when when it says in a uh, revelation the 11th chapter come up hither that's he's that's going to be him seizing carrying us off snatching us out of babylon all right from out of that great city babylon that's going to be leveled that's going to be destroyed right after we're taken away all right some people going to think that because they've been mind programmed by Hollywood or Hollywood that this is some type of alien invasion. And, uh, you know, this is just some mysterious uh, phenomenon happening and uh, people are getting snatched away because they're getting ready to go through an incinerator or, or you know, like like it's a, a, a world, a global kidnapping that's happening. No, man, this is going to be a day of salvation. A day of deliverance, a day of redemption. That's what's going to be taking place. All right. So to other people, it's going to seem like a like a, a, you know, a misery that's happening. But really, it's us being redeemed. We're being saved from the Lord's uh, wrath, his destruction, his indignation. Because that's what's going to be taking place simultaneously. All right. So the Lord is going to quickly get us out of the way. 
And let's go to uh, Revelation 11. And I'm going to start at verse 8. I might as well start there. Revelation 11, verse 8. And this is dealing with both the northern and the southern kingdom. All right. The two witnesses. All right. After, you know, the testimony is finished, you know, us being brought over here in captivity, the nations doing what they did against us, Esau doing what they did against us. You know, our heritage was beaten out of us, but then the Lord blew his blew his breath into us, right? It says, uh, Revelation 11 and 8, it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. It's talking about Babylon the Great. And we already know why this, is, this place was called uh, spiritually Sodom and Egypt, right? Where also our Lord was crucified. And, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, that 350 years that you know we were um the southern kingdom was brought over here and you know we were um finally um joined together with the northern tribes and we suffered captivity like it says in jeremiah 50 and uh, 33 that judah and israel were both oppressed together and the nations got to look upon us while we were calling ourselves black uh, uh indian mexican puerto rican all right, Christian, Muslim, right? It says, and so, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. No, let our eye look upon Zion. Let us look upon them while they're dead, you know? Well, you know, they don't have the understanding because as long as they don't have the understanding, they will not rise together. That way we can have our way over them, right? So don't put their bodies, their dead bodies in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Mosai entered into them. And that spirit of life is talking about the, the breath or the Holy Spirit, the wisdom. All right. It, it, and it quickened us right and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them and this was prophesied to happen right here right here in babylon the great and then that spirit of life that breath flowed from this side of the world even to the other side of the world and you have other brothers and sisters all over the world that who then uh been risen up and, and now stand upon their feet all right because we were dead spiritually Let's go to, uh, you know, you can also read Ezekiel 37 chapter. We always go into that chapter, but that's a whole nother lesson. Let's get um, Baruch, the second chapter. It is uh, Baruch 2 and verse uh, 30, it says, for I knew that they would not hear me because it's a stiff-necked people, but in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And how was that going to happen? The Lord stirring us up by way of remembrance, by pouring upon us, you know, his breath, the, the, the spirit of life. Right? And they shall know that I am the Lord, their power, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. And that's and the Lord returned his name to us that we may call upon it with one uh, consent. All right. He gave he, he restored that language. And now we're calling upon his name and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sin before the Lord. And that's, you know, the, the spirit of life had to enter into us for us to, to, to remember. All right. Let's go from there. Let's get uh Wisdom of Solomon seven. Yeah, 
Yeah, Rosa Masalim 7 and 24 says, For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of the Most High and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. All right. So there it is. You know, that's the, the, the breath. All right. And he blew that upon those dry bones. And they stood upon her feet. They were made alive. They were quickened. So reading verse 11 again, it says, And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying, Unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Let's look up that word, ascended. And the word is anabeno, anabeno, and it says ascend to go up, to rise, mount, be born up, spring up. So basically to ascend. All right. So they, the Lord said, come up, you know, that, that trumpet blew with that shout and brothers and sisters came, came from up out of Babylon, from wherever city that they were in and went right up into the ship, the father ship, and all of our enemies look basically were looking up. They they, they stared into the heavens and, and and saw what was happening. And like it says in Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, they shall be a they shall be amazed at the strangeness of their salvation. This is what they saw. Esau, all right, uh, uh, our scoffers. Or you might have had a, a a baby mama that that committed adultery on you or treated you uh, poorly. All right, she, she gonna be standing right there, through, looking up, seeing you go up. All right. So this is describing the same event. John saw this event. Paul. All right, he 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 describes the event, and then it's all throughout even. The Old Testament uh, scriptures uh, with with the prophets, prophet Isaiah seen it, Jeremiah, and I'm gonna show even Moses. We're gonna we're gonna get into it, but let's uh, go back to the video. We're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna, with the help of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, we're gonna unravel. We're gonna unravel this mystery today. So this is where this stems from. The word caught up. But I want to show you today, first of all, that this notion, when you, when people, and you're going to get it, if you believe in this event that the Apostle Paul wrote about to the churches in the New Testament and described it in detail in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15, when he began to go into detail about this, or not 1 Corinthians 15, in 1 Corinthians, um, excuse me, it's in 1 Corinthians when he talks about the, uh, we shall all be changed in a moment, a twilight given an eye. When he began to talk about this event, if you even remotely entertain the notion that God is going to catch away or snatch away suddenly, and we're going to talk about that in more detail, a body of believers, you get met with fierce criticism and say, this is, this can nowhere be found in the Bible. Well, I want to disprove that, first of all. Well, people that have that opinion, they're not learned. All right. And, 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 you know, pretty much the Lord withheld, withheld, all right, that mystery of the scriptures from them. Uh, like it says in uh, second uh, Corinthians. Was it the, the fourth chapter? If, if this gospel be hid, is hid to them that are lost. You know, so it ain't meant for everybody to understand or grasp. All right, the the the, the mysteries of of the gospel, man. Okay. Because we see this happen 
at least three times in the Bible. Ready? Number one, Enoch, according to your Bible, Enoch was walking with God and was righteous before him, was serving God. He was the seventh from Adam. He was a prophet and was, the Bible says he walked for God. He walked with God for 365 years and the Lord translated him or, and he was taken to heaven. Listen to me. He never saw physical death. He was taken from earth to heaven by a supernatural event in which he was translated. In fact, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 5, it uses the word translated. He was caught up. He was snatched away. He was. Now let's, uh, let's go to the account in Genesis, the fifth chapter. And I'm pretty sure the word that's used when it describes him being taken up or taken away is going to be um, similar to the term that was used by Paul. This is uh, Genesis 5. And I'm going to start at um, 21. It says, And Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with the Most High Power after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with the Most High Power. And he was not, for the Most High took him. Now let's look up that word, took him. And the word is a uh, lacroix. And you get the, the same definitions used in the other uh, Greek word for caught up. Let's go back to um let's go back to that word in uh Thessalonians. So that's showing you that we're gonna get up out of here just like Enoch did. It's, uh, was that first Thessalonians? Five and uh, 16, 15. <clears throat> I feel like you had four and uh, 15. Uh, four and uh, seven, yeah, 17. First Thessalonians 4 and 17. Let's go to that word caught up. Let's revisit that. And the word is harpazo. And it says to siege, carry off by force, to siege on, claim for one's self eagerly, to snatch out or away. So this is uh, the Hebrew equivalent. La croix, to, to take, get, fetch. Lay hold of, seize, receive, you know, take away, to take from, take out of, take, carry away, take away. All right. So there it is. So he's actually right about uh, Enoch. Okay. Enoch was caught up. He was translated. Okay. So let's uh, continue taken unto heaven and there he received a series of revelation he received uh mysteries of god and you can find these in the books of first and second enoch yeah we don't get into that that's them pseudepigrapha books now we know that there is a book of enoch out there but the ones in circulation that they be going into you know, there's no proof that that's uh legit and plus, when you go into them, them other uh, uh, sources, a lot of it does not coincide with the Bible. So we leave that alone. You know, like I said, you know, they have a zeal of the most high, but not according to knowledge. Whether this guy is, uh, you know, uh, Jake or not, you know, because you got certain Edomites, you know, they get into it. You know, Jake, they be on a low level with it, man. 
they don't really be going into you know the the, the deeper topics all right but uh you know you could tell that this dude does his studies though but let's uh continue the word in genesis chapter 5 verse 24 it says enoch was not for god took him the word took the phrase took him in hebrew is a Hebrew word meaning, listen to me, to take away, to take away, to take away from the earth to receive unto heaven. The root of this word in Hebrew means to, oh, this is so good right here, to marry or to wed. It's in the same connotation. Oh, come on, somebody. Listen, I'm I'm going to get excited about this message today. I don't. Well, yeah, because uh, it says right here to take a wife. You see it right there, and we are. That hey, that's crazy, man. <laughs> that's crazy, yo, because we are the wife of the Most High. All right, even Apostle Paul said, "I have a I have espoused you to one husband." As chaste virgins unto the Lord. All right. The Lord uh, was at Isaiah the 54th chapter. Let's get that. So really when the Lord snatches us up out of there. It's like him taking it, snatching his wife back. He's going to snatch his wife. He's going to repair his wife unto him. You know, when it says go and take you a wife. Well, the Lord's going to come take his wife. Up out of uh, Babylon and from all the places where they were uh, driven. Let's go to Isaiah 54. And that uh, was a six. Yeah, Isaiah 54, verse six, it says, For the Lord have called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth, when thou was refused, say of thy power. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Because the Lord is going to gather us from the four corners of the earth. All right. Oh, Shalaki, I was supposed to start from verse five. Uh, verse five, it says, For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, and the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. And this is referring to the nation of Israel. Okay. He's married unto the nation of Israel. And that's why when you go into Revelation, the 21st chapter, it talks about uh, New Jerusalem coming down. It talks about how she was adorned. Yeah, Revelation 21 and 1, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. This is after the missiles hit and everything. And I, jaw, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the most high power out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. You know, because the, the marriage ceremony took place. You know, once uh, the elect got beamed up and, and, and it was joined with the Lord, that was basically like a marriage ceremony. Okay? those And, and they were virgins pursuant to uh, Revelation 14. Because why? Because they were not defiled with women. There was no guile found in their mouth. They taught the hundred percent true doctrine of the Lord. Okay, and and also they 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 kept fast to that which was good. And endured unto the end. All right, so this is all describing that that moment. So going back to that word, you know, and that's another way you take a woman. All right, you can take a woman. Well, in the ancient world, of course. You took her by force. If she wasn't uh, married, you laid hold on her. That was one of the ways. If you didn't, you know, uh, uh, you know, go to her father and, 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 you know, deal with the transaction, you know, or if you didn't uh, seduce her or entice her and, 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 and lay with her. The third option, which, you know, most men would shy away from, but if that happened, you know, there was a way to deal with that. All right, and also, hey, how the Lord, you know, got us up out of this world and brought us into this truth. He pretty much uh, took us. He, he he sieged us from out of this world, away from, you know, our, our families and brought us into uh, the nation. Or should I say, into the tabernacle of David. 
let's get uh Jeremiah three and uh was that fourteen? Yeah, it says, uh, turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. All right. Let me see if uh let me see what that word take me. And there's that word again, la croix, to take. So spiritually, you know, he he he, he took us. And, and brought us to Zion. Okay, that that assembly. So yeah, that that's that that was kind of heavy right there, you know. So let's let's go back uh, here a little bit more. I don't really care. Listen, you can get mad and poo poo it all you want, but I get built, I get edified, and I get comforted when I read the word of God. This Hebrew word in Genesis 5 24 took him. This phrase took him means to take away, and it comes from the root word meaning to marry or to wed, and it's in the same connotation. As John chapter 14, when Jesus said this, ready? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house <clears throat> are many mansions. We, we covered this yesterday. Where is the Father's house that has many mansions? In heaven. If it were not so, I would have told you. <clears throat> I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive. Somebody say receive. The word receive here. Yeah, I mean, how else are we going to get to the places in heaven if we're not taken up? We got to be taken off this earth to go and, you know, inherit these places that he has prepared for us. Right. But let's uh, hear what he, he about to go into the term receive. Let me go to it real quick. see what it say John 14 and 3 and if I go and prepare a place for you I come again I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also hmm and that word receive paralabano paralambano and it says to take, to take with oneself, to join to oneself. Yeah, like like uh, being taken in 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 marriage. Yeah. It also uses take, take up, take away. So we're going to be joined with him, you know. He's going to receive his elect. All right. So, you know, he, he so far he's he's this guy's on point. All right. And, you know, and he also mentioned uh, you know, he said three different uh times where you find this uh event happening. Uh we go into um Elijah, how he was taken up in a cloud, right? Also, uh, you have um, he he brought he brought up Enoch. Uh, Elijah was taken up in the whirlwind, and also um, the Lord, of course, you know, in Acts the first chapter, you know, he basically uh, ascended up into heaven, and it was uh, you know, they was gazing up at the Lord when he went up into that cloud. And the angels asked him, you know, why are you standing gazing? The, the, the manner that you see him leave is the same way he's going to return, right? Now, I also did this in a lesson a while back. You know, it might be on the channel. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still uh, uploaded on the channel. But I went into uh, the breakdown in uh, Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, where it says that I will fetch thee, right? Uh, Deuteronomy 30 
and uh, one, it says, and it shall come to pass when all these things are come unto thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy power have driven thee, and shall return unto the Lord thy power, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children, and with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy power will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, which he's getting ready to do. Because the, the, the punishment of our iniquity is, uh, is at his end. That's why the Lord is uh, waking us up all over the world. All right. Uh, the, the elect are being sealed, if not already been sealed. And now you're seeing all these prophecies are just happening. Because the Lord is uh, in the midst of getting ready to turn our captivity. We are ready to return to the Lord with all our heart, with all our might, with all our soul. We are ready to uh, call to mind, all right, uh, the, the blessing and the curse. You know, we identify ourselves because we see that we've been cursed, all right, and we're getting ready to inherit the blessing again, right? And this is happening worldwide. It says, um, If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost out, it's like the outmost parts of heaven, meaning the the the, the, the furthest, all right, the the, the most uh, farthest uh, end of the earth, which is uh, on the western uh, hemisphere. From thence will the Lord thy power gather thee, and from thence will He fetch thee. All right, so this, this is how He's going to gather us. From the four corners of the earth. Now let's look up that word fetch. And what do you have it? La croix. Okay, same term used to describe how Enoch was, uh, you know, uh, taken, taken up or taken away. And also this, uh, the, the the same term that means uh, Mary. All right. And it says uh, this, the, the same definition to take, to get, fetch, lay hold of, siege, receive, which is synonymous or uh, the equivalent of that Greek word harpazo. OK. Which is uh, what Paul uh, used in reference to the elect being uh, changed and beamed up. So that's how the Lord is going to fetch us, okay, from 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 this land, which, you know, America is uh, that outmost part of, of the heaven, all right, the uttermost part. We're here right now, we, and, and this is where the Lord is going to um, fetch us, and also from the different other places in the world where our people are scattered. So thus, when you go into Matthew, the 24th chapter, this is how the elect are going to be gathered from the four winds of the earth to the other. All right, Matthew 24 and 29, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be taken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. Of heaven with power and great glory every eye shall see him and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet just like Paul uh, mentioned and they shall gather together all right basically they're gonna fetch his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other all right and that's how it's gonna go come up hither okay and for us in Babylon, hey, come out of her, my people, that you be not partaker of her of her sins, you know, of her, of her plagues. For in one hour, you know, this this place is gonna get uh, destroyed. All right. So this is you know that event, that final event, man. This is the event of salvation. If you're not a part of that, you you are not saved. You can't say that you've been saved. You were not saved if you were not caught up. Okay? So, 
you know, I'm, 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 I guess I'll stop it here, you know, for, for the sake of the, of the time. But, uh, you know, as, as far as I'm seeing, you know, he's actually, uh, you know, he's going in. All right. And, and, and who knows, like I said, you know, we don't know if this guy is an Edomite just based on the surface. He appears to be an Edomite. He looked like an Edomite, but you never know. But he do have that zeal and he be, you know, he be bringing it out. There's certain things he, he, he doesn't have right. All right, like it was another video he did right before this one where he believes that um, the so-called rapture and the second coming of the Lord are two different events. I just, We just went into how that's going to be the same thing because Michael, the archangel, is going to have to stand for us. It's going to be a war in heaven. The Lord's going to be a part of that. He's going to gather as elect. He's going to get them out of the way, and he's going to uh, make war with uh, uh, the armies of, of Esau. The beast, uh, the, the NATO troops, all right, all those armies gathered in the Middle East, the war of Armageddon, the Lord's going to be a part of that. But the elect are going to be in the ship, protected and rejoicing. So anyway, you know, I, I, I could have went, you know, longer, but I think the point was made. But uh, Lord willing, this was edifying. I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Shai. Until the next lesson, shall it warm.